we will begin the last unit of the course on financial applications and it's a real shame that we save this for the very end of the course because you can very well argue that this is the most important course uh, sorry, most important unit of the course and uh, perhaps the most important unit in all the math courses you'll take in high school math now I don't want to give you the perception that this unit is going to make you an expert with, uh, with money. Uh, you won't become a financial advisor by the end of this unit. But what this unit does give you is a very uh, strong understanding of how money works and how you can be uh, making good decisions with your money. Um, and hopefully by doing so, you'll be financially free uh, when you're older. Okay. So this unit is all about teaching you to make good decisions. And uh, if you don't already make good decisions, uh, this unit will hopefully convince you why you want to make these uh, correct decisions with your money. So you know what? Let's jump into it. This is our first lesson, which is on simple interest. So when you have a job, you make money. All right, when you put the money in the bank, you are putting in an amount called the principal. So not every bank account will give you money, but let's say this is a savings account uh, and it does give you some money, okay? Uh, the principal is the amount of money you put into investment or a loan at the start, okay? So if you think about it, this idea of interest which we're going to talk about it can benefit you but it can also really uh, hurt you because um, you could be making lots of money through interest but i guess you can also see it the other way which is you you end up um, owing a lot of money because of interest uh, the principal in your savings account earns money called interest okay One type of interest is called simple interest. The other type, which we're going to talk about in the next lesson, is called compound interest. So simple interest, uh, there are not many real life examples that, um, that work like simple interest, but I will put a link in the description box uh, showing an example of bonds, which basically works um, with the idea of simple interest in mind. So, uh, how do you calculate simple interest? Let's take a look at this example here. Uh, you deposit $500 in the bank. The bank pays you 2% simple interest each year. How much interest does the bank give you at the end of four years? Now, one thing that you really have to remember is that simple interest is calculated as a percentage of the principal. Okay, percentage of the principal. That's very important to understand. So if that is the case, this is how you calculate the interest. Uh, how do you calculate simple interest? You take your principal times your interest rate times a number of interest periods. So I equals PRT. In this case, P, the principal is 500. The rate is 0 0.02. That's 2% times 4 because that's four years and it's 2% each year, 2% of the principal each year. If you do the math, you'll get $40, which makes perfect sense because 2% of 500 is $10. At the end of each year, you will get $10 from the bank. Okay. And if that's four years, that's 10, 10, 10, 10, which means that's $40 from the bank. Now, um, sometimes the bank will pay interest um, uh, more frequently. They'll pay at the end of each month as opposed to the end of each year. In fact, I'd argue uh, if you have a savings account, most of them will pay uh, at the end of each month as opposed to the end of each year. Uh, but the way the, the banks work, if you have a savings account, it's, it's usually compound interest and not, not, not simple interest. But all I'm trying to say is when it comes to the payout, you should really uh, ask yourself or find out for yourself uh, is the payout of the, the interest at the end of 
each year, at the end of each month, or whatever the case may be. So every time I teach this, or I, I, I show this example to students, um, the students say, it's only $40. Okay, so my counter argument, yes, it's only $40. If you have a part-time job, you can probably make $40 in three to four hours. Okay, um, but I will say a few things. If you don't stash away this money, this $500, if you just kept it in your wallet, first of all, it's a horrible, horrible idea to keep that $500 in your wallet for two big reasons. The first reason being, if you keep the $500 in your wallet, you're probably going to spend it. And the second reason, which I'm going to uh, say it over and over again in this unit, Never keep a large chunk of money just sitting there, uh, and whether it's in a, in a checking account or in your wallet. If you have $500 in your wallet, your money is being suffocated to death, okay? It is not doing anything for you when it's sitting in your wallet. So my example is when I was a kid, um, gas cost... Uh, I think it was, let's say like 70 or 50, 60 cents, let's say 67 cents per liter, okay? Right now, in fact, like it peaked, but then uh, it dropped back down. So let's say right now it's like a dollar, a dollar three cents per liter, okay? This, this is showing you that things in life get more expensive and that is called inflation. You could look at the price of bread in the 1920s and then the price of bread in 2020. It's totally different. Everything goes up in price. Okay, the, like the, the, the bare necessities when it comes to like gas, um, bread, uh, eggs, whatever. You can imagine it. Things just get more expensive. So if you have money and it's not growing, if you are not getting richer, then you are getting poorer. Which is, which is kind of strange, but if you think about it, let's say I have $500 today, and I still have $500 a year from now. In fact, you have less buying power because of inflation, okay? Which means you're poor. You can't buy nearly as much. So I, I don't want to you know, call people poor, but I, I, if you have less buying power, I'd say, yeah, you got poor. Anyways, um, yeah, so my counter argument is you really don't want to hold on to this money uh, because it's just dying. So put it in a place where it grows and so so putting it in your wallet is suffocating the money. Spending the money is just killing the money outright. <laughs> so your third option is to put it in a safe place and make it grow. Uh, so yes, $40 isn't much, but it's better than nothing. You didn't do anything to earn that $40. Okay, so there's a lot of arguments why this is a good idea. You want to make good decisions with your money, and this is an example of a good decision. In fact, I argue actually this is actually a not so good decision. Uh, I don't want to complicate the issue because, but I, I will say this because I want you to be rich. So uh, two percent simple interest. This is this this kind of growth. If someone gave me a growth of two percent per year, I would I would. I turn it down because right now inflation is 4% per year. So 2% growth isn't even covering inflation. So I need to look for something. I need to put my money where it exceeds inflation. So I'm keeping up with society. Otherwise, then, then I have less buying power. All right. So here we have a beautiful table. Um, uh, we have a $1,000 principal. Whoa, 10% interest rate. So that is not what the bank is offering you. That's probably some like, um, so you're, you're going to, you need, you need somewhere else. Um, unfortunately, like when you talk about stock, mar stock markets or mutual funds or whatever, the, the, the rate of growth is not constant. In fact, some, some years you're going to lose money. So let's say you average the, the rate and it's like 10% growth. Um, or you know what, you, you miraculously find a bank that offers. 10% interest rate. So let's keep this simple. $1,000 principal, 10% interest rate per year. So 10% of a thousand is a hundred, which means at the end of the first year, you have $1,100. Uh, 
And then you earn another $100 because simple interest is interest as a percentage of the principal. It's always 10% of the thousand. So it's $100 every year, assuming you have this constant 10% interest rate. So I want you to look at the growth and I want you to associate a word with this growth, with simple interest. So hopefully the word that you think of is a linear growth, okay? You're growing by $100 every single month. And one last thing I'm going to say about simple interest, if you don't like the, uh, um, the interest you've earned, okay, and this is later on as well, if you don't like the interest you've earned, there are a few things you can do, okay? Look at the formula here, PRT, okay? If you don't like the interest you earn, you have three options. You increase your principal or you find a place that offers you a better rate or you increase the number of interest periods. So that means like a longer uh, timeline in terms of your investment. And $500, investing $500 is actually, if that was your plan for retirement, that, that's a horrible plan. Because even if that investment was very, very successful, let's say you're able to, I don't know, like quintuple your investment, okay? 500 times five is just $2,500, right? So that's why it's very challenging to be rich, to get rich when you have a small principal. Because even if you double, triple, quadruple your, your principal, you're still not that rich, okay? Like if you had $2,000 and you, you, you quintuple your investment, that's 10,000 only, okay? How are you gonna be a millionaire? You need a thousand thousand to be a millionaire. So we'll talk about that. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's a very good start for our discussion of uh, financial applications.